Battleship is a two-person game. Two people are playing side by side, but in the natural, in our spiritual battle, what's really happening is the enemy, Satan, is sitting around a table with all of his demons, all of his cohorts, and they're planning. They are strategizing against us. But don't fear, because the Lord said in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 15, do not fear, do not be afraid, do not look at his vast army. No, for this is not your battle, it is God's battle. This is God's battle that we're in. So, be of good cheer, as uh, John 16, 33 says. You know, in this world, you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. The Amplified says that I have deprived it from its ability to harm you. Jesus has already overcome. It says the same thing in 1 John 5, verse 4. You know, he has overcome the world. He has overcome the world. In this battle that we're in, it's God's battle. So what we have to do is stand in agreement with God and with the helpers that he's given us. God's given us helpers. You know, Jesus said, I've got to go to send you another helper, the Holy Spirit. Well, another helper, that means we already have one helper. So we have two helpers, the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. So we can look over and see Satan and his demons cohorting, strategizing against us. But no, we have ourselves. We have God. We have the Word of God. We have the Holy Spirit. And Jesus has already won the battle. It's done. It's already done. He has already defeated the enemy. So we just have to stand upon that. We have to stand on what Jesus has already done. Now, me, when I like to play, and I was being obnoxious at the time, but we can do this now. So when I would go to call a number, I would say, uh, I won, game over. So now we can really do that. We can really do that because Jesus has overcome the world. John 16, 33. So we can't just proclaim to Satan, you know what? I won. You lose. Bye. Let's get out of here. I've submitted to God. I've resisted you. So you got to flee. You got to get out of here. In the name of Jesus, you just go. Go ahead and leave. Bye. Okay. Jesus has already overcome the world. We don't have to just sit here and take all the attacks of the enemy. We don't have to because Jesus has already won the battle. But what we have to realize is we stand upon the word. The word of God is our defense. So as we stand upon the word, we can proclaim Isaiah 8.10. We can tell the enemy, you know what? Devise a plan and it will be thwarted. You know, it will be thwarted. Your plan is not going to work. You know, God is on my side. Jesus has already won the battle. Your plan is going to be thwarted. It is going to come to naught. It is going to be thwarted. And then 2 Corinthians 2.10 says that I know your schemes. I know what you're doing, but I'm going to stand upon the word of God and I will prevail. Isaiah 54.17 says that no weapon formed against me will prosper. As I stand upon the word, those weapons will not prosper. His plan will be thwarted. It will come to naught if we stand upon the word of God. So the word of God is our defensive attack. It thwarts the plan of the enemy. That's why 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 says that cast, take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. No matter what thoughts come in your head, whatever fiery darts the enemy's sh shooting at you that, that's trying to pollute your mind, take all those things captive to the obedience of Christ. Christ, as John 1, 1 would say, is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. So bring every thought captive to the Word of God. Does this line up with the Word? The Word is our defense. The Word is our defense. Okay? Take Ephesians 6.16, for example. Take up the shield of faith with which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Okay? Again, our defense is the shield of faith. Well, that's not the Word. Well, look at Romans 10.17. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing... By the word of God. So our shield is the word of God. Again, that is our defense. It's our defense mechanism. The word of God. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Quench every fiery dart of the enemy with your shield of faith, which is the word of God. Okay? So the word is our defensive mechanism. It's also our offensive mechanism. The word of God. Again, Ephesians 6, talking about the armor of God. 
take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We're not fighting with flaming missiles. No, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Our weapon is the Word of God. And according to Hebrews 4.12, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's living, it's powerful, it's active, piercing to the division of soul and spirit. Our weapon is the Word. So our defense is the Word. Our offense is the Word. The Word is the key to our victory. We need to stand upon the Word of God. So it's no wonder that Satan's main scheme, his main plot, is to get us out of the Word. We have to stay in the Word. It's our offense. It's our defense. Don't let the enemy trick you into saying you don't need to get in the Word today. It's not important. You got it yesterday or you heard the Word at church last week. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Satan is trying to keep you out of the Word. Why? Because it's our offense. It's our defense. That's our victory. And if he keeps us out of the Word, he keeps us in darkness. Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So if we're not in the word, we're in darkness. And according to Proverbs 4.19, if we're in darkness, we're not even going to know what we stumble over. So don't let the enemy trick you into saying it's not important for you to get into the word. You quench every fiery dart of the enemy through the word of God. Your offensive attack is by the sword of the spirit, the word of God. Look at how Jesus you know, responded in the desert to Satan when he was tempting him. For it is written... It is written, you shall not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus' offensive attack was the word of God. You could also view it as his defensive attack. Our offense and our defense is the word of God. So you need to be in the word of God. You need to know the word of God. You need to be able to quote the word of God. Any area that you're struggling in, any temptation, know the word of God. Quote the word of God in that area. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. You submit to God by being in the word of God. The word is God, John 1.1. 1, 1. So submitting to God is being in the word. Being in the word is resisting the devil, and as you do that, he will flee. So do not fall into the tricks, the traps, the schemes, the strategies of the enemy to try to keep you out of the word. The word is your weapon. The word is your defense. It is your shield. The word is the key to your victory. So, as in Battleship, the enemy is firing flaming missiles. You need to be in the Word. You need to be quoting the Word. And if the, the enemy has hit you in any area, find a scripture. Memorize that scripture. Quote that scripture. The Word of God will set you free.